SpaceX is going to launch Starships to orbit after the FAA approval. Or at the end of this year. Or never? What's up with all the confusion and how is SpaceX going to continue? What about it? Go for launch. We're go for launch. Let's light this candle. Ignition sequence start. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And as always, there's been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. SpaceX Starship Holdup Delays are a common thing in the space industry. Almost every rocket development faced them at some point during the design and construction phase. SpaceX is no different in this regard, even though their delays normally are less severe. Currently, there are some statements confusing the space community at large, and today we're going to clear those up. In SpaceX's case involving the development of arguably the most important rocket in human history, it's not entirely up to SpaceX. It's at least partly been taken out of their hands right now. The FAA, or Federal Aviation Administration, has yet again postponed their date for the ongoing environmental review regarding Starbase and Boca Chica. For the second time in a row, they have updated their project page. It's available online and there is a link to it in the description if you want to read it yourself. The website states that over 19,000 comments were received regarding the case and that more time is needed to account for further review and ongoing interagency consultation. This doesn't give us much to speculate. Of course, the internal interagency communication is not public, so the detailed reasoning behind the delay can only be guessed on. At the last Starship update on February 11th, Musk said a few exciting things though, which leave much room for interpretation. He stated that SpaceX would be ready for the orbital flight soon after the approval by the FAA. He also stated that this significant flight milestone might happen towards the end of this year. Last but not least, he said that if the permission by the FAA for further launch activity at the South Texas launch site is not given, SpaceX would be ready and willing to move their Starship test operations towards the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, as there already is valid permission readily available there. That's a big chunk of information that needs more context for the big picture to become visible. It's unknown if there are political games in motion to keep SpaceX from launching at Starbase right now, so I won't make it a topic on my channel. But there are conclusions that can be drawn from the known facts. Chief, our YCAM operator at Starbase Texas was busy in the past two weeks. Almost daily deliveries, mega bay construction to give more room for prototype construction, extensive tank farm tests to make the infrastructure ready for an orbital launch. Mechazilla has been used for the first time in preparation for the Ship 20 and Booster 4 stack. After all, it was just a backdrop for Musk's 2022 Starship presentation. Nonetheless, it showed that Mechazilla is ready for such ground handling work. Ship 20 has seen more pressure testing, further validating the construction. And everything seemed to work out just fine as well. The same goes for Booster 4. Ice buildup on the outside of such a prototype means that cryogenic testing is underway. And again, Booster 4 seemed to do just fine on this recent test conducted on February 18th. All in all, there's no visible holdback, no major problem. The Starship development is as fast as ever and SpaceX is not standing still. Chief is constantly moving between launch and construction site to keep up with all the milestones. This, for example, is Ship 22. It's a hybrid between Ship 21's nose cone and Ship 22's tank section. I speculated about SpaceX not retiring Ship 22 and instead combining it with the Ship 21 nose cone almost two months ago, and now it's happened. The stack is done and Ship 22 is ready to be fleshed out, waiting for Booster 7 to be prepared as well. The Mega Bay, SpaceX's latest addition to the rapidly growing infrastructure at the Starbase production site, has just seen Level 5 stacked on top of the steadily growing building. So in short, even though Musk states that he'd be ready to move operations to the East Coast and to Kennedy Space Center, progress at Starbase is arguably even speeding up right now. So what's the plan? How is SpaceX moving forward and what will the next couple of months bring? If we connect all the dots, the picture is relatively straightforward. SpaceX is going to go with the flow. If the FAA greenlights Starbase and orbital Starship flights out of Boca Chica soon enough, Musk and his team want to be ready. 
Construction is ongoing, tests are being conducted and there is no sign at all pointing towards SpaceX wanting to stop anytime soon. No matter what headline you might have been reading on traditional media outlets. Musk stating at the same time that SpaceX could be ready for an orbital launch soon after the FAA approval, so around the end of March, and at the same time stating that it will happen until the end of the year is a bit more complex though. Those two statements contradict each other, which leads to a lot of confusion. Having researched into the project for the past three years and having dealt with many cryptic Musk statements in 207 episodes of Why So Far, my thought on all of it is a bit simpler. Musk wants to keep all the possibilities on the table. If the FAA greenlights Starbase at the end of March, as they stated a few days ago, SpaceX will do an orbital launch soon after. Everything at Starbase points towards SpaceX being ready and willing to go the next step needed to reach orbit. On the other hand though, Musk stated that it will happen until the end of this year. This statement is likely not connected to Starbase and that's where a lot of the confusion comes from. End of the year means KSC. It means SpaceX continuing their already ongoing efforts of building a second pillar of the Starship program. A rescue plan if the FAA does not approve further launches in Texas. Musk also stated at the recent Starship update that SpaceX would be ready to launch Starships out of Kennedy Space Center in roughly half a year. Six months would get us to August. That is well within 2022 and I guess this is the reason for Musk seemingly contradicting himself by saying April but at least this year. I hope I was able to clear up at least some confusion with this first news topic as that's the main reason why I am running this channel. What is the space industry's next move and why? To help us do our work even better and for a wider audience, now's the time to pause the video, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, write your thoughts in the comments or buy a shirt on our YWare store to support our work. Or check out Y Plus where you can find fresh Starship footage from the Y Cam almost every day. You rock! SpaceX Polaris Missions Our next topic is directly connected to the last. How is SpaceX working towards crewed Starship flights? How is Musk's team preparing for longer duration flights? What's needed for that first trip to Mars? To find answers to all these questions and more, SpaceX has announced the Polaris missions on February 14th. The spaceflight community is buzzing about it and rightfully so. Polaris is at least somewhat comparable to the Gemini program, which was a preparation for NASA and its subsequent Apollo program. Jared Isaacman, the commander of the recent Inspiration4 mission, which was the first ever entirely private spaceflight, is helping with funding and will be a part of all three missions. The first of three missions will be Polaris Dawn. It will feature a Crew Dragon launch on a Falcon 9 rocket. It will travel out to the Van Allen Belt, a high radiation zone extending around Earth from around 640 to 58,000 kilometers. It's unknown how high the orbit of Polaris Dawn will be, but SpaceX already announced that they intend to break the height record for crewed orbits around Earth. SpaceX also plans to test Starlink laser communication on Polaris Dawn. Communication between Earth, Moon and Mars will be needed for SpaceX's colonization efforts and it can't be NASA's deep space network alone. The DSN is currently used by NASA for all its deep space efforts, but it won't handle all of what SpaceX is planning. So Starlink will be extended towards Moon and Mars and for long distance links it will utilize laser communication. Expect some incredible livestream quality from the capsule and the EVAs. Most importantly, SpaceX will conduct the first civilian EVA during Polaris Dawn. For this, they won't use a NASA EVA suit, but instead an upgraded version of the SpaceX pressure suits. The goal is to cut down preparation time for EVAs as much as possible and make the suit as mobile and easy to use as possible. Now let's do a bit of speculation as to how SpaceX might be able to do this. Current NASA EVA suits have one big problem. They are incredibly clunky. So much so that a suit even can't be put on by a single person. The astronaut planned for the EVA needs help. It takes around an hour just to hop into the suit and preparations for such an EVA often exceed a day of tasks needed for the FAA to play out as planned. So if SpaceX wants to reduce all this, what's needed? 
Essentially, the only problem with an EVA suit is that it's technically a soft spacecraft. It needs almost every system that an actual spacecraft has to keep an astronaut alive. The giant backpack, the thick suit, all this comes from those systems. Life support, cooling, communication. There is no practical way to shrink these systems down by much either. The only way to accomplish a sleek and easier to handle EVA suit would be to take those systems out of the suit. It all comes down to gaining mobility and cutting down on setup time. This is all speculation, but why not create an external system that follows the astronaut? A drone, so to say, that supplies the astronaut with everything needed, attached by a lifeline cord in a minute, would enable SpaceX to build an easy to handle and relatively lightweight suit. It would get rid of all sorts of problems at the same time. It would allow SpaceX to base their EVA suit design on the current IVA or intravehicular activity suit and it would be a typical SpaceX think outside the box approach. It's impossible to say what SpaceX will do to improve conventional EVA suit designs. Still, it's relatively safe to say that it will be a surprising and radical approach. Something no one has thought of yet. So maybe not my idea either. Polaris 1 is slated for a launch no earlier than the fourth quarter of 2022, so this year. Polaris 2 has no launch date yet, but it will be the preparation flight for the most significant project announced by SpaceX so far. Polaris 3. The mission will be the first crewed flight of a starship in human history. It's been confirmed by Jared Isaacman himself that the flight will be crewed all the way. Ascend, orbit and re-entry with crew on board. Isaacman is planning to be a part of the mission and it will demonstrate Starship's crew flight capability. Before this mission, SpaceX will conduct numerous Starship flights, delivering payload to low Earth orbit, landing, reflying hardware and making sure that the rocket itself is safe for a crewed flight. So it's very safe to say that SpaceX's Starship program is not on halt. Musk's plans are taking shape more and more and even if the FAA does not greenlight Starbase for orbital flights, launches will occur at Kennedy Space Center. Good times to be alive. Today's video is supported by Brilliant. I've said these words many times, so let's find out why Brilliant was my first and still is my monthly sponsor. Brilliant is the perfect sponsor for an educational YouTube channel like mine. Watching videos and reading text is a great way to gain a basic understanding of subjects, but to take your comprehension to the next level, you need to actually do it. Brilliant is all about interactivity. Their classes and lessons are full of experimenting and experiencing the topics on your own. And this is the most effective way of actually understanding and not just memorizing something. How does heat flow work? One of the most critical topics when designing a rocket engine. What is pressure and how do different pressures react to each other? Ever seen a starship blow up? What is a reflection and why are some surfaces reflective and others not? Starling streaks in the night sky. Almost every topic in STEM is somehow connected to the spaceflight industry. Logic-based thinking. Geometry with real-world examples. Mathematics. You'll find all of it on Brilliant in an easy-to-understand way that makes you crack the most difficult topics in no time. That's why Brilliant has been a continuous sponsor of What About It for more than two years. To get started for free and try out everything Brilliant has to offer, visit brilliant.org slash whataboutit or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Today's supporter shoutout goes to, and this list is going to be a little longer, Aaron in AK, Michael Babushkin, Mad Science One, Jeremy Schmidt, White Wizard, Malwag, Luke Bowers, David Quarry, Astro Van Tucket, Chad Hill, Paul Petty, Matthew Redhead, and many others. You rock so incredibly much. Becoming a part of the Y family means that you've entered the community's inner circle. You've gained access to insights into the production, me talking to you on our Discord server and early and ad-free releases. Thank you for supporting us so much and I can't wait to see you on our Discord server. Arglu arguably said this wrong. Case involving the develop development course, the inter 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 <laughs> over 9000. He also stated that this significant flight. Ich nehme doch auf. Ihr müsst doch leise sein.